certain of wild animals, whether to kill or chase them away, or even to assist someone in doing so. To fell trees or cut green plants from the area of the haram, this applies if one is in a state of ihram or not. Also, to pick up lost property in the haram area except to announce its discovery. To make a proposal or a contract of marriage, whether for oneself or for someone else. One must not have sexual relations with women whilst in ihram, nor having any contact with women involving passion or lust. It is forbidden for a woman in ihram to wear gloves on her hands and likewise to veil her face completely or partially unless she is in the presence of strange men. In which case, it is compulsory for her to veil her face as if she was not in the state of ihram. From the prohibited actions for men is the covering of the head with the ihram sheet or anything similar which is in contact with the head. As for seeking shade from the sun or the roof of a vehicle or the carrying of luggage upon the head, then there is no harm in that. If one does cover his head in the prohibited manner out of forgetfulness or ignorance, then he must remove the covering immediately once he remembers or becomes informed of the ruling. Also, from the prohibited actions of ihram are the wearing of sewn clothing, whether on all or part of the body, such as the grat shirt, cloak, trousers, caps, or leather socks. Except if one does not have the white waist sheet, he can wear trousers or doesn't have sandals, he can then wear leather socks. There would be no blame on him. It is permissible for one in ihram to wear sandals, rings, glasses, watches, hearing aids, a belt, and a pouch to safe keep his money and documents. Likewise, it is allowed to change one's ihram clothing or to clean it also to bathe one's head and body. In doing so, if some hair falls unintentionally, then there is no blame. If one is afflicted with an injury or wound, then that does not affect his state of ihram. There is no specific salat to be performed for ihram as many think and have come to believe. As such, it is compulsory upon those who intend to perform Hajj or Umrah and all Muslims in general that they adhere only to that which Allah have enjoined upon them from the obligations such as Salah at its prescribed time in congregation and that they avoid committing sin, acts of disobedience, outrages and other similar actions. It is also forbidden for all the pilgrims in the state of Ihram to perform any sexual acts. The journey takes us to the noble city of Mecca where there is the ancient house of Allah. It is recommended that the pilgrim takes a complete bath on his arrival. When he enters the Masjid al-Haram, he should enter with his right foot and say, I seek refuge with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his noble face, his everlasting authority from the accused shaitan. O oh Allah, open the doors of your mercy for me. This supplication is prescribed on entering all mosques. Next, the pilgrim thus travels to the noble Kaaba to begin the tawaf. It is from the sunnah for the men during the tawaf of arrival to make ibtiba, which involves uncovering the right shoulder, placing the middle of one's upper sheet under the right armpit and the two ends of the sheet on the left shoulder. Then the pilgrim begins a tawaf of seven circuits, beginning at the black stone, and if it is possible to get close to it, then he should kiss the stone. If he is able to, without harming the people by way of crowding, pushing, abusing, or fighting, as all of that is certainly wrong, and doing so harms the Muslims. It is sufficient in such a crowd to point at the black stone from afar and saying, Allahu Akbar. By this, the pilgrim begins his tawaf, constantly making dhikr of Allah, seeking his forgiveness, and calling upon him by whatever supplication he chooses. Or, he may recite the Quran, but without raising his voice, with specific supplications the way some people do, as doing so disturbs and confuses the other pilgrims performing tawaf. When the pilgrim reaches the Yemeni corner, the corner of the Kaaba facing Yemen, he touches it with his hand if it is easy to do so. One should not kiss or wipe it as some people do in contradiction to the manner of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If it is not easy for one to touch the Yemeni corner, then the pilgrim should move on without pointing at it or saying Allahu Akbar. With this, the pilgrim completes his tawaf as he began performing in total seven total such circuits, each time beginning at the black stone and ending there. Likewise, it is from the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make a run which is to hasten while walking, making short quick steps during the first three circuits from the Tawaf al qudun It will be noticed that there are a number of errors committed by some pilgrims during Tawaf. A major error is to pass inside the Hijr during Tawaf believing that it is a part of the Tawaf path, when in reality, passing inside the Hijr actually invalidates the Tawaf. 
The reason being that the pilgrim will have cut short his tawaf by traveling within part as to what is actually the Kaaba instead of around it as is prescribed. The wiping or even the touching of all the corners of the Kaaba or its walls, curtains and its doors, the same applies for the Maqam Ibrahim. All these acts are forbidden because they are all innovations and therefore have no basis in the prescribed law of Islam and the Prophet wasallam, did not do any of them. It is also not allowed to raise one's voice during tawaf as doing so causes disturbance and confusion to the other pilgrims. The female pilgrims competing and crowding with the men, particularly near the Hajjah al-Aswad and the Maqam Ibrahim. So, dear pilgrim, it is compulsory upon you that you avoid all of these errors and incorrect practices. As soon as you have completed your tawaf, you should hasten to cover your right shoulder. It is an emphasized sunnah of the Prophet wasallam after completing the tawaf to pray two raka'ah behind Maqam Ibrahim, if it is easy to do so. Otherwise, one may pray the two raka'ah anywhere in the Masjid al-Haram. Next, move to the Mount of As-Safa for the seven journeys of Sa'i. When you approach As-Safa, you should begin with that which Allah Azza wa Jal began with in His Ayah. Certainly, As-Safa and Al-Marwa are from amongst the symbols of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, it is not a sin upon him who performs Hajj or Umrah to perform the Tawaf between them. Whoever does good actions voluntarily, then be sure that Allah is the All-Grateful and the All-Knowing. Then, you step onto a part of Mount as -Safa, and whilst facing the Kaaba with raised hands, Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify and supplicate to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next, the pilgrim descends as Safa, facing and heading towards Al Marwa, walking and constantly supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Himself, His family, and all believers using whichever supplications that are becoming for Him. When the pilgrim reaches the first green sign, he should run at a quick pace until he reaches the second green sign. Then he continues walking as normal until he arrives at Al Marwa. This running is to be performed by the male pilgrims only and not the females. When you arrive at Al Marwa, face the Kaaba and repeat the supplications which you said on climbing as Safa. Then make supplications as you will. After that, you descend and walk back until you reach the green sign where you run quickly again until you arrive at the second green sign. Then you complete the walking as usual until you climb as Safa. In this manner, you complete your seven journeys. So, your traveling from as Safa to Al Marwa is one complete journey. And your returning to Al Marwa from as Safa is another complete journey. If you begin the Sa'i walking and you become exhausted, or you were afflicted with pain due to an accident or other health problems, then there would be no blame on you if you were to complete your sa'i riding a wheelchair. It is permissible for the menstruating woman and those in their after childbirth conditions to perform the sa'i but not the tawaf of the Kaaba because the path between as safa and Al-Marwa is not included inside Al-Masjid Al-Haram. The female pilgrims should not hurry between the green signs during the sa'i as this is from the mistakes often committed. After completing the sa'i, the male pilgrim has the hair from his head cut short if he is performing hajj at tamattur. He must make sure that his hair is cut evenly all over his head. As for the female pilgrim, then they should only cut from their hair a length equivalent to a finger joint from the end of one finger. This should not be done in the presence of non-mahram pilgrims. With this, the pilgrim performing the hajj at tamattur has completed his umrah. 
So everything that the state of Ihram prohibited him from now becomes permissible for him again. A person performing the Hajj or Umrah should recite the Talbiyah in abundance and at its proper times, which for Umrah are from the time one assumes Ihram till he begins the Tawaf and for Hajj from the time one assumes Ihram till when he stones the biggest pillar on the morning of Eid. On the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Tarweer, the pilgrims in their state of Ihram and with their different and sat head towards the plain of Mina, following the way of the Prophet It is recommended to head for Mina before the sun reaches its meridian. It is for the beginning of the time for Salatul Duhr. The pilgrims then pray at Mina, the Salat of Duhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr, shortening those with four raka'ah to two. Each prayer should be performed at its prescribed time, so no two prayers are combined. This applies whether one is a resident of Mecca or not. It is from the Sunnah for the pilgrim to spend the night in Mina on the day of Tarwiyah until he prays the Fajr on the night of Dhul Hijjah. He then waits until the sun has clearly risen and travels towards Arafah in a quiet, peaceful, and tranquil manner, constantly reciting the Tarwiyah and saying, Allahu Akbar. The ninth day of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Arafah, the groups of pilgrims arrive at the plain of Arafah on this witness day, which the Messenger of Guidance, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, described as the best of days. The pilgrim spends this great day on the plain of Arafah from the time the sun rises until it sets completely. It is from the Sunnah to stop temporarily at Namira, if that is possible, and to perform the Salat of Dhul and Asr, shortened and combined at the beginning time of Dhul. If one is unable to stop at Nemira, one must make sure that the place where he camps is within the boundaries of Arafah. There are a number of signs and guidance boards which clearly show the boundaries. The whole plain of Arafah is a place for standing. So, dear pilgrim, on this great day, you must strive in preoccupying yourself with the Talbiyah and Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should also seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance along with the Glorifying him by saying Allahu Akbar and by proclaiming his oneness saying La ilaha illallah. You must turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of submission and humiliation and you must strive hard with supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yourself, your family, your children and for your fellow Muslims. When the time of Duhur arrives, the Imam addresses the people with a sermon that consists of reminders and guidance. After that, he will lead the pilgrims in performing Duhur and Asr combined and shorten the two raka'ah each in the way that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam acted. No one should perform any prayer before, after, or between these two. You must avoid making certain errors that ruin the recompense and reward of this great day and noble place. From these errors, which are often committed by some pilgrims are, some pilgrims arriving at Arafat come outside its boundaries, remaining there until the sun has set. And then they move towards Muzdalifa, having not spent any time inside the plain of Arafah. Leaving from Arafah before the sun has set completely, and this is not allowed, as it is in contradiction to the practice of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, crowding together and pushing one another in order that they may climb the mountain of Arafah and reach its summit, also wiping the hand against it, performing